Hello YouTube, today we are testing out the extreme cold vapor barrier boots developed after the Korean War, aka the warmest boots on planet Earth. Hey, sorry about that, forgot to say that I have two important announcements coming at the end of this video, so if you want to know them, that's where you'll find them. Sub you Oh no, he let, he let him go first. I, he filmed first so he can he can say what he needs to say. YouTube, this is Michael, um, founder of the Iron Snail and CEO. Hello YouTube, it's Michael. It's a little bit later in the day. I think hat up so the ears can hear is better than hat down. Everybody keeps messaging me today and they're like, Michael, do you want to come to my house and we can watch the Super Bowl? Nope, absolutely not. I could care less. I have better things to do with my time. I'm here just to make sure everything's okay. It is Super Bowl Sunday at 4.22 p.m. I am wearing my Grand Seiko Omiwatari. Shout out to Theon Harris, the company I work for. Today we are talking about the Extreme Cold Winter Vapor Varrier Boots by Bata. Right off the bat, these are obviously very serious boots. Each boot, in fact, weighs three and a quarter pounds, which is way more than you'd probably ever wear on your feet for any normal situation walking through the snow. Unless you just live in like a very, very cold area, these boots are absolutely not applicable and very, very heavy, absolutely impenetrable to water. They don't breathe at all, but wow, they are very fascinating. There's a lot of things to talk about today. Can't wait for that. Sorry, I'm out of breath because I did that take like 30 times but we'll prevail. So anyways, today we're gonna to talk about the history of how we got to these boots because there's actually a very fascinating two iterations of boots before this one. And then we'll talk about the boots itself, why the construction is so simple, the pluses, the minuses, why it's so cool, and then I'll leave and you can go do whatever the heck you want. Nice and manly, just like how soldiers clear the snow off the tree before they sit on it. So the first boots that were widely circulated by the US Army and then also did not go out of commission. A lot of other boots come up, but the originals also did not go out of commission, they just got updated. The first original ones were called mucklucks. Mucklucks are very interesting, you've probably seen them a million times, they're still used today. But the original ones were, actually I'll just read right off the ad. Mucklucks are best footwear for the Arctic. They are made of tan leather bottoms with sturdy canvas duck tops. Inside are heavy woolen socks, a felt slipper, and a heavy burlap insole. That's not what we typically see for boots today. We see mucklucks a lot, or you see mucklucks a lot. If you're anywhere that's cold, they just don't look like that anymore. But the reason that worked and you had just canvas on top and leather on the bottom is because those were for dry cold, where it's extremely cold outside, like negative temperatures or just, there is no slush. There is none of this. It is just freezing cold. So you didn't really have to worry about water in general. And then those boots are extremely effective and they're still extremely effective to this day. Their main benefit versus bunny boots is that they are breathable. So obviously mucklucks, like I said, were good in dry cold, but when we got to wet cold or soldiers had to go through water or anything like that, mucklucks were no longer the best tool. So that canvas upper, while it was so great that it was breathable, also the major downside of course was that it was breathable and water could permeate it. Me again, I just reviewed the shot and with these boots from this angle as I bend, one to one I look like an elf. Just quick reminder, I am two announcements at the end of this video, you can't forget. There is though something in between a muckluck and a bunny boot and that is literally basically just a combination of a muckluck and a bunny boot, aka a shoe pack. Shoe packs came about in World War II which is essentially, it's not a duck boot like what you see from L.L. Bean but think like a Sorel moose boot? I forget what they're called. These boots, that is a shoe pack, which basically combines the best of both worlds, meaning that the upper part of the boot is breathable, it's a leather, it's a canvas. I think most things were canvas. And the bottom is typically a rubber, so it doesn't breathe, but if you're walking through slush, your feet stay drier than they did before. Something important to note though is basically all of these boots are conditionally linked to the fact that you will have to take your boots off every once in a while to switch your socks, wring out your socks, or just drain the boots of sweat. The Iron Snail. Pipe cleaner pups? Okay, I'll look it up right now. Just doing some networking here, sorry for the interruption. Pipe cleaner pups, you should check them out. That's actually, it's a very, it's actually a very cool channel. Whatever, that's how, that's how business is made, baby. I also just want to qualify this by saying I totally understand I look like an idiot with these giant boots and skinny jeans. And it's just because I wanted to fade the jeans, not because I thought it looked good. We have our three boots. We have mucklucks, which are great for dry cold. We have snow packs, which are great for really kind of a mix and walking around in like slushy cold. And then we have extreme cold vapor barrier boots. And after that, the Korean War happened and that, that was cold. That was very 
very, very cold. So cold to the fact that mukluks and shoe packs were not cutting it anymore. Soldiers were getting frostbite and it was very bad. I don't obviously know the perspective of the designers that made the bunny boot and the Mickey Mouse boot, but the perspective was we just need to protect these people's feet. They don't need to be super light. They don't need to be incredibly comfortable. They don't need to be breathable. We just don't want to have frostbitten feet that we have to chop off anymore. So first things first, they made the Mickey Mouse boot, which was black and good to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That still wasn't good enough, so they quickly iterated to what I am wearing today, the bunny boot, which is good to negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and that did the trick. But even then, apparently it was so cold that there's a lot of disclaimers with these boots, or just I, the army itself said, these are good to negative 60 degrees, make sure you keep moving. These boots, their only goal is to be warm, and that is it. So what you want me to do, I'll do it for you. Yeah, whatever you want to do, I'm just gonna count to, let's say three, and I'll take the first photo, and I'll take a couple. Okay, perfect. I must look incredibly approachable today. Usually I get talked to three or four times making a video, but today it's been every single person that I walk by or I'm filming by, they're like, hey, what are you, uh, what are you doing out here? This is a regular trail and people keep, they're like, are you filming a time lapse? No, I'm not filming a time lapse. I'm not saying that I didn't want to be approached. I'm just saying, welcome to the show. We do things a little different around here on the Iron Snail. Like, it, like we don't usually talk about the subject of the video until about halfway through. Hey, that guy just wanted me to remind you that there's an announcement at the end of this video, don't forget. But the basic construction of all three of these boots is essentially the same, except for the outside. The bottom, there is a ton of felted wool. There is an inch and a half, two inches of felted wool. Then on the top, around the boot, on the actual foot part, pay attention to that, there is less wool, but still a lot, probably a half inch, which is still a ton of wool. Then you're of course expected to wear one or two pairs of wool socks that you'll be switching out through the day because your feet will be so sweaty, and that's that. What makes these boots so special is what this valve is on the side. And you may be thinking, what is this valve on the side? Well, all of these insulators, wool, down, synthetic, anything like that, their main goal is to trap air and keep it close to your body. You warm up that air with your body heat, and then since it's held there, it returns a favor back to you, and then you keep warming it as that air blows away or whatever it may be. So there's wool on this, and then obviously the outside is rubber, so no air gets in and out. So your feet warms up the wool, and it basically stays like that. And that's why it's okay if your feet are very sweaty, because these boots could literally fill up with water and still be warm because the air does not come in and out the rubber takes care of that and wool is still very very insulating when wet the other fascinating part and i'm not positive about this so this part may not be 100 percent correct but the foot the actual foot part of the boot is wool there's only wool insulation and then coming up the ankle and kind of like you'll see it in this shape that is basically two layers of rubber with air in between and if you undo this valve that little layer opens up and the air comes out the only purpose of that valve is when you're going on a plane with these boots if you don't do that there's a possibility that that little pocket of air will rupture with a pressure change so you're supposed to do that so the air comes in and out you should really other than that never unscrew those but when you need more mobility an inch a half inch two inches of wool is not good for that and you need mobility bending your feet and moving your feet side to side so that's where i think this little air pocket comes in anyways final thoughts on these boots is it ties in with the yeti i have a yeti rambler that my mom and dad got me for christmas that's amazing but i poured the tea in for it at like 10 a.m and i wanted to drink it at 10 15. i shot the video down there at like 4 30 p.m and it was still pretty hot so as an effective tool for me to drink my tea within 15 minutes of pouring it very ineffective and overkill. This outside environment right now where it's like 30 degrees and I'm wearing the warmest boots on earth is essentially me trying to drink scalding hot water out of my Yeti at 10.15. And if you're a soldier, you're probably thinking, thank God that little guy with the boots on that looks like an elf is not the person that was serving this country. If you're looking for the size, I went true to size, normally an eight, stuck it with an eight, fits fine, and accounts for like two layers of wool socks. So you can't beat them, they're great boots. It's getting very dark and it's time for me to go. Okay, so two things I want to announce real quick. The first is not that fun. The second one is actually kind of fun. But the first thing, the tail of the Iron Snail and the Prologue jacket, aka the denim jacket that I'm working on, is still coming. Do not worry. But it being COVID and all that, there are supply chain issues. So almost everything is at Naked and Famous, but they have not started production yet. 
because of supply chain issues and stuff like that. So I will give you an update as soon as I possibly can. I'm trying to get a sample so I could show it to you when that starts. Second thing, the big announcement is that I am starting a second channel. I currently have zero subscribers. The name is Michael Christie. That's the channel name too. So it's literally about anything except clothing. The Iron Snail is not going to change at all. Video every week, still kind of vloggy and all that stuff. But I figured if there's something I want to talk about off topic, the way YouTube works, it will never really promote it on the Iron Snail. So I figured I'll have another channel called Michael Christie. And I'm going to start that in March and post a video every other week to start. And I might not continue doing it, but I definitely want to give it a little shot and see what happens. So subscribe there if you want to, and I will be mentioning it like every video. I'll say, go look at that channel, please, please. There's nothing there, but it still could be fun.